Hey guys, Jessica again with your Parallax Project of the Week. Today we're going to expand on the topics we learned in Pingdar and create a new program in which the Bobot is going to scan for and go to the closest object that it sees. And the best part is that we can use the same components and setup that we used in Pingdar. Look familiar? So we're going to need, of course, your Bobot, the ping mounting bracket with standard servo, and of course the ping ultrasonic sensor. Now, a word of caution. Before you run this program, you're going to want to run Pingdar first. It uses a lot of the same concepts that we're going to use in this activity, and in order to get a better understanding of what's going on, you're going to need the Pingdar background. That being said, let's get started. Let's take a look at what the Bobot will do when running the full program. Just like Pingdar, the Bobot does a 180 degree sweep of the area, but then it calculates the closest object, centers the ping bracket to face that object, and then moves towards it. Neat, huh? Let's take a look at where the full documentation and source code for this project exists. Just like in Pingdar, full documentation and source code can be found on forums.parallax.com, stamps in class, stamps in class mini projects, and then scan for and go to closest object. This post contains all information you will need for completing this project on your own. Basically, what this program is going to do is it's going to take the first half of Pingdar and expand on it so the Bobot now moves to the closest thing that it sees. So, as I said before, you should really run Pingdar before attempting this activity. Especially since the first thing that we're going to want to do is to mark the limit left and limit right values from the Pingdar test program, Test Ping Direction. And these values tell the bracket how to perform a 180 degree sweep. So, without this calibration, your bracket may not rotate a full 180 degrees, which in turn will affect your final program. After you've marked these values, the first test program that we're going to want to run is going to ensure that your Bobot moves in a straight line. You may remember doing something similar in Robotics with a Bobot Chapter 4. We're going to follow the same procedure here, but instead of modifying the pulse out commands directly, we're going to modify the con values at the beginning of the program. Organizing our code like this from the start will help simplify our lives later on down the road. Also keep in mind that these calibration values will vary from carpet to a hard surface. So you should run the calibration program in whichever environment you plan to run the final program. Now that our Bobot moves in a perfectly straight line, we're ready for the second test program, Calibrate 180 Degree Turns, which will, you guessed it, calibrate our Bobot to perform perfect 180 degree turns when rotating both left and right. The idea here, again, is to adjust the con values in order to get our Bobot to execute perfect 180 degree turns. Changing the values in the for next loop won't help since we want the Bobot to fully rotate after 128 pulses have been sent to its servos. It's a good idea to unplug the Bobot from the computer before testing the turns. The serial or USB cable can pose a hindrance to your calibration. Now that all of our calibration values have been defined, we're ready to run the final program. Remember how I said earlier that putting all of our values in cons would make our life easier down the road? Here's why. At the beginning of the program, we can just replace these values with the values we obtained through calibration. This saves us from having to comb through the entire program to find where each calibration value was used. Also, one last measurement that we'll have to take is from the front of the ping rangefinder to the center of the Bobot's turning axis. It should be either 7 centimeters or around 5 centimeters. If it's 5 centimeters, update the ping angle offset con directive accordingly. Make sure your calibration values are correct, or else your final program might run something like this. And really, this just isn't a cool program. But, once you're sure each calibration value is entered correctly, you're ready to run the program. Remember our 8.5 by 11 pieces of printer paper from the Pingdar activity? Turns out, they're great for this one as well. Go ahead and set them somewhere within a 1 meter radius of your Bobot. I would actually start them out a little bit closer than that. Place them at distances so one is noticeably closer than the other. And see if your Bobot goes to the closest one. Notice how the bracket first rotates to 0 degrees, does a sweep of the area, finds the closest object, then calculates how to get there, rotates the Bobot, and goes straight for it. And that's all there is to it. Remember, for full source code and documentation, go to www.parallax.com and click the Project of the Week banner. Or you can go directly to the Stamps in Class mini project page on forums.parallax.com. 
Until next time, happy developing!